Well, my name's Harry Pattinson, and uh, I tattoo from 29 King Street in South Shales. We've been here since 1986. Well, when I first started tattooing, basically it was uh, a tattoo was something that, well, it was sought after. It, it wasn't like, a, as it is now, like a fashion accessory. Uh, what it was then, there were very few tattooists around. I mean, this shop was the first registered tattoo studio in the whole of South Tyneside. Supplies were very hard to get. There wasn't many people supplied tattoo equipment or inks and uh, buy stuff from a registered supplier you had to be a registered tattooist. Uh, I work at Tattoo You and South Shields with Harry Pattinson. I served a three and a half year apprenticeship and since February 28th of this year I've been registered tattooer. Originally it was one of my friends that got us into it. I used to I used to play rugby and I used to train with him in the gym and he started getting tattooed and he was getting tattooed off Harry and I was just like the way they looked at it and I thought it was pretty cool and started coming down and started getting tattooed off Harry. Got to have a bit of a good relationship with him. You know, uh, people get a lot of tattoos these days to symbolise stuff, you know. It's a, it's a means of being able to carry it around with them. But then on the other hand a lot of people just get tattooed for the love of tattoos, you know. Um, I got tattooed on the base of my hand, on the back here. Yeah. Just a infill out of a few more little dots and stars. Forgetting that it hurts a little bit. <laughs> well I was in the armed forces in the late 1960s and it, um, anybody in older shot in the armed forces it seemed to be the thing. It was like a rite of passage. Um, there's a very well known tattooist there and he tattooed thousands and thousands of soldiers. As a young squaddy I was no different than anybody else. Then tattooing became Seemed to became very fashionable again. I had this thing to have another tattoo, cause the large tattoo on me back. I'll not be finished till sometime next year. Ever since I was a kid, I was always looking at people with tattoos. My dad had little crosses on his hands. I was fascinated by them. I got my very first tattoo um, from a guy called Chris Wright. He was just starting off then. I think he charges five pound. He's an award-winning tattooist now. My largest tattoo was the one on my back. Um, I think I paid about £60 for it and never ever got it coloured in. I think when I was younger, tattoos were taboo. Not any more than not. You walk around the streets now, you see all the young'uns, and it's more like a fashion statement, copying off footballers. I guess it's like a summer sleeve, really, isn't it? I'm Tony Hansen, I work in the House of Ink. I've been tattooing for about 12 years now. I first got into tattooing by coming to tattoo shops. I've always liked going and looking at the flash on the walls and I've always thought like, I could do that. The pictures on the walls that I've, that, like, I've drew half of them up to myself. Um, it's just my own design work. My yeah, first stages is if people come into the shop, some people may want like custom work or they may like say, can you, they may bring a picture on or, or can you like tweak it up for them. But when you do the picture, you always do your print, put your print on, do your transfer. After that, you sort your guns out with your needles, put the, your tattoo machine together, and just start tattooing from there. Um, I play a lot of music, I play in bands, and this really was my dad's influence. I was into punk, and I thought punk had just started in the 70s, until my dad gave me a record of Eddie Cochran, and said, yeah, play that. So I learned it, and I said, Dad, this is just like punk. And my dad turned around and says, check the date was recorded, you idiot. Rather than going in and just saying, I'll have that one, I'll have this one, I'll have the other, and just picking it off the, off the board, which I did myself with that one, but I think if you're going to get something on your skin that's going to be on for life, then you should put a bit more thought into it. My name is Valerie and I'm the owner of Valonia Tattoos. I've been tattooing for 10 years and I started because I got into art when I was a child. I think it's just more acceptable, it's more... From from years where even when I first started tattooing, there wasn't as many women got tattoos. There were certainly not as many female tattoo artists as there is now. But I, th I just think then there was a lot of a stigma attached to women in tattoos, and it wasn't you didn't walk down the street and see people with tattoos female. Where now, because of fashion reasons and, and things like that, it all started. You know, one person gets one, somebody else gets one, and it, it sort of goes on from there. Where I think now. I don't think I know anyone without one tattoo, no matter how small. Any every, full range of tattoos, we do small tattoos, we do little five, ten minute tattoos, up to nine hour sittings, um, full arms, full legs, full back pieces, 
um, anything like that. We're, we're near enough 100% bespoke here as well, so if anyone wants anything, um, I draw it up from them from scratch. So they're getting something that they're involved in the process of getting the tattoo as well. So if they want angels, religious tattoos or something like that, not just picking somebody else's tattoo, that they're going, I normally go back to old religious paintings and things like that and I take, take images from there and then I would draw their tattoo so it's just 100% for them. I'll be covered by Christmas. <laughs> Working on it. Can you feel that, does it hurt or? No, it doesn't hurt. It's a, uh, it just feels like a bit pressure on your arm. Sensation? Yeah. Rather than a pain. The, um, a lot of people find the outline hurts more than what getting shoot, like colored in does anyways. The outline's more where the burn comes from. I think it depends on the individual person as well, what their pain threshold's like. That's like, true, because I've had people in here where they'll sit four, five, six, seven hours in really painful places. Yeah. Getting their ribs tattooed, getting backs tattooed and things like that. Yet yeah, you'll get people who come in and the tattoo's tiny, takes five minutes and they're absolutely ill. They feel sick, they pass out. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, like I say, we, we, the majority of our clients are female. Um, I think just because they feel more comfortable getting tattooed by another female. Um, ranging from 18 year old to my oldest client, which is 76. And she came in here, she did have no tattoos. She came in here on a mobility scooter, pulled up outside, come in wanting to make an appointment. And I was talking to her about why she wanted a tattoo and she's always, always wanted one for years and years and years. She's had henna tattoos, she's had fake tattoos and her family always said, you're too old, you can't have one, you shouldn't have one. And when she got to 76, she decided that she wanted her first tattoo and now she's got about six. So you get clients from, people get memorial tattoos, you get people wanting tattoos for fashion reasons because they look good. And I think if you've got an environment to make them feel comfortable, that's why they keep coming back. From an early age, I saw um, a young punk girl on the bus. I was with my mother, I must have been about five. And she was tattooed and had shaved head, blue Mohican, you know, studded jacket. And I remember thinking, when I'm older, that's exactly how I want to look. The piece I have on my back, it's me developing into an adult from a very young, shy, quiet young girl, growing into an independent, strong female that's in control of her life. My left leg um, is dedicated to my children, because they are my whole world. Um, and I don't really do names or portraits, but I've got a um, fairy tale leg with my children, and things that remind me of them when they were younger. It makes my story of my, my motherhood part of my life. And on the other leg is the present. It's me, the whole witch thing going on, pirates. But as a whole, they make up um, the air, the earth, the fire, the water, and the back is the spirit, which is how I live my life, really. Lead my life by that. My name's Neil Sims. I'm co-owner of Body Art here in South Shields. My thing's freehand. Freehand is it's everything to me. I, I love the challenge of being asked to create artwork on the spot, from memory. It's, it's incredible that people trust us to do this. I was looking for a, a tattooist who would design something that was bespoke and, and just for me, for my back. It was then I found out about Neil's background with him being a sculptor and an artist previously before he went into tattoo and Neil drew a lot of designs hand drawn and then eventually came back with the, the design which I actually really love and it's, it's a big lady's face uh, which models a little bit on my wife uh, but very much around Neil's style. Every single session that we go through you, you can see the piece coming to life and it's it's absolutely beautiful so I, I couldn't couldn't be happier. I also feel like I'm making my, a mark as an artist in, in South Shields. Right we've just applied a stencil this is a, a carbon stencil of the what will be the finished design we've got to apply this and then give that a few minutes to set with our new stencil applicator before we can actually start the physical act of tattooing it. I've had several tattoos done in the past um, this one, they represent, all represent a different part of my life, different stories. Just basically disappointing me in my life and now I want better things and I just wanted to symbolise that. Um, I've been searching for a design like this for ages. This one, um, the dragon and the tiger is the yin yang. Hopefully 
when it's fully finished, a bit of freehand from Neil will look the part. I don't think, I think it's an initial, um, if you've had several already, it's, I think it's an, just the initial couple of minutes in it starting off uh, and then it's just back there. Yeah. Like I describe it as a, a cat cloning you. Uh, the longest tattoo session I've ever done was on a friend of mine, Ronnie Semple. Um, Ronnie commissioned me to create artwork for a back piece, which in all took about 32 hours. What I did was I went to see his, uh, his pencil drawings and his artwork first before they decided if I was going to let him tattoo me. I'm a musician, so uh, I, just, I chose a theme for, uh, for music to be on my back. It took 32 hours in total to get it done. Uh, the longest one session I did was six hours which was exceptionally painful. Since then, I've probably had in excess of a dozen, if not more, tattoos from him. Uh, he's more of a friend now. A lot of people have said to me, you know, when are you ever going to stop getting tattoos? Basically, the, mo the way I feel at the moment, it'll be when I run out of skin, because I have found over the last, particularly three or four years, when I've got all this fabulous artwork on my body, I'm very proud of it. Uh, and that it's, it does become very addictive. My most unusual job was on a, a lady who had had an operation on her intestines and it had removed her belly button. Um, so I came along with my little tattoo machine and I gave her a new one. And that's a nice side of the business when you can kind of move yourself away from constant money making to make people happy.